What's going on, traders, and welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Watch List. In the Weekly Watch List, I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on the tickers here on the left. We have the broad market comprised of SPY, the Qs, and IWM. After that, we look at some companies. We have Apple, Netflix, Tesla, Alibaba, Facebook, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Amazon. I'm sure you can tell by all the circles and dots over here on the watch list, there's plenty of earnings plays to be discussed as we head into our companies. But most importantly, we still have the tug of war going on between SPY, the Qs, and IWM. If you watched last week's video, you know we were watching for the uh, dynamic between the three of them to play out and ultimately give us a market direction. Well, I think that, you know, again, this week, there will still be some interplay between the three. They're all not quite synced up right now. So we will talk about that as well. And lastly, all of our free resources are linked down below in the description of this video. Let's hop into the analysis. Jumping right into our SPY weekly chart, the first thing you might notice is that we actually closed and broke our resistance trend line. We closed above it there, so that is a bullish thing to note. Next thing to talk about is the structure of our candle, which is a hammer candle here on the weekly chart, but more importantly, where is it happening? Above our previous triple top resistance from here, which is exactly what we want to see, right? When resistance is broken, the fundamental principle in technical analysis is that it then becomes support, and that's exactly what this lower wick on the hammer is indicating us to here, that we did find some strong support in this area of the chart so things all looking good here for bullish continuation higher the one thing i do want to point out as well is the sort of tug of war as we've mentioned if we look at the balance area and consolidation zone for the weekly bull flag as we've talked about for such a long time now uh, we're first and finally starting to retest that upper end once again so the push and pull here for spy will be if spy can break out higher that will ultimately set up a move to retest the all-time high, right? However, if we get the pullback off of this level, does it set the market up to go lower? And are we going to consolidate further throughout this consolidation range that we've been talking about? So that's the push and pull here for the SPY. I think if we continue to break down some daily levels, so jumping into the daily, just to point out some more nuanced levels and targets. Again, if we break out over our resistance top up here at 323.44, I think there's some uh, resistance to be resolved before we get to that level, which we'll actually mark off because we want to be prepared. That level is right around here, which you can see is a little bit tighter fit to the most recent area of resistance, right around 322.65, we'll call it. But if we can clear this zone, ultimately what we formed this week was three days of balance. And when that breaks out, we're going to just double our balance to the upside. So that would put us back into this gap remembering that between the yellow lines is an unfilled gap if we can get into it because of the doubling of this little breakout range over 325.16 i think very little resistance in here would lead me to believe that we go up to 332.12 quite easily so those are upside targets of course if we can break out to the upside if we don't get the breakout of the balance area to the upside instead what we're looking at is a breakdown of the balance so essentially a doubling to the downside which sort of puts us in between range and back in this strong area of chop that was going on in here so for supports below, I would first be watching for 317.50 to certainly act as a strong area of support if we break down below 319. Anything lower than that, and we're sort of looking at this next really strong area of support, which is in here, around 314.25. And lower than that, we have 3, uh, 312, which we've talked about in the past. And just the last one that we'll point out, we don't really necessarily want to be going all the way back down to 300, but the one that we do want to pay attention to as a last-ditch uh, potential for a higher low to form is going to be around 308, especially especially because the 50 SMA is starting to catch up with that level. And again, just looking at the range that we would have to fall to get there, it's quite uh, drastic, quite intense. I don't necessarily think that's what will happen, but I do want you to be prepared for any scenario that could play out. Next up, we have the Qs, which are forming a very interesting pattern as well. And again, this is why I think that the tug of war is going to be quite strong. We are starting to see sort of a bottoming here based on all these lower wicks that we've formed. We've essentially formed three lower wicks, forming a tiny little mini inverted head and shoulders here, signaling to us that the next move should be higher. Uh, but we haven't made it all the way back down into our support trend line of the bullish trend channel that we're in. So does the Q's essentially dribbled back down lower and retest that support trend line, or is this sort of the first uh, or next little bottom that we see before the next leg up happens is the question that you have to be asking yourself here on the cues. And essentially, you know, in terms of the tug of war, if SPY breaks out higher over the balance area, the longer term one that we talk about on the weekly chart, then potentially the cues come back up and retest the resistance. If SPY gets rejected there, then maybe we come back down and get into the support trend line, in which case when the cues get into the support trend line, we're going to start looking for the SPYs to bounce as well to the upside. So these are the dynamics I want you to be paying attention to in terms of levels to to be watching for this week. Let's go ahead and break out our price 
level tool. We want to mark in the new all-time high, of course, up here at 269.80, just about. Um, but right now, based on this hammer, targets to the upside, first having to battle back up through 260.89. If we can get over that, our next area of resistance on the chart is going to be up around 264.23. I'd even call this area in here slightly below it an area of resistance to pay attention to at 262.75, just because we have two tops that formed exactly to the penny almost at that same area. So watch out for that one. And of course, the all-time high up above. To the downside, though, if this little inverted head and shoulders doesn't work out, it doesn't play out, we have strong support below at 265.54 based on some of our touches in here but lower than that we have our level at 254.25 and then our support trend line ultimately starting to act before we even get into some of the lower levels at 251.15 and then if there's a major collapse of that support trend line which again i'm not anticipating but i do want you to be prepared we do have levels down below at 246.56 and lastly, coming back over to check out IWM, Russell 2000, and the small caps. This is where I think things get really interesting just because we have our balance area that we talked about in last week's video uh, essentially developing value down here. And what we saw in the last three days of trading is a really strong gap up that held. The most important thing about this is that it held. So because we have that push and pull, the SPY is essentially a little bit higher, but not extreme of a gap like this. The Qs are pulling back and IWM is sitting up here uh, developing value higher. Again, tug of war that's going on. I think if we see the doubling of this breakout range, again, we're sort of looking at targets up to 150. That's a nice psychological resistance, but anything higher than that, we're looking at 152.38 based on some of our previous resistance in this area of the chart. To the downside, if this doesn't uh, resolve upwards, oops, wrong tool. If this doesn't resolve upwards, we're looking at the doubling to the downside, in which case we're just simply having a retest of our previous area of resistance which again as we covered in spy should start to act as a level of support so let's map the one, that one out with the price tool that is going to be our level in here right around 142 that is sort of where we have all these highs touching the same area one two three four just about and then of course i'm sure there's an intraday level there on thursday as well so that makes for a nice first target to the downside Lower than that, though, and we have our level at 139.77, which is where all these candles sort of closed. I would even adjust it slightly lower uh, just because it's uh, it's sort of cutting through the bottoms of those candles instead of the lows. Let's just drop it down a little bit. I think that's more accurate and more acceptable, especially with the 50 SMA there. 139.18, lower than that. Again, the triple bottom down here at 136.31. And lastly, the other triple bottom back here at 134.50. Based on the 200 SMA and the structure of these candles, again, I do think that we are finding some strong support here, especially now back above the support trend line. The move, in my opinion, wants to be up, but we are prepared for all directions the video i'm sure you're enjoying the analysis hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel that way you know every single time i drop a new video the next thing i want to point out is that we are going to be discussing some companies that do have earnings coming up so with earnings we're not playing options on them to be directionally correct and what i mean by that is that let's say we think that apple is going to be up on earnings we're not going to buy calls expecting that move for two reasons, right? One is that earnings, even though the earnings could be good, uh, that could already be priced into the move and the stock could go down. And the same is true for the opposite. Even though we think earnings could be bad, uh, that could already be priced into the move and the move could be up. So we could be completely wrong, even though we guessed the correct direction or uh, the direction that earnings essentially wanted to play out. So that's number one. The second reason is going to be because of volatility, right? So even though we might be correct in direction and you know we think earnings on Apple, for example, are going to be good the price goes up even though we got both of them correct even if we bought a call because of volatility and because of volatility leading up into a binary event like this premiums are going to be extremely expensive so we might take a loss even though we were correct in both instances so that's one thing i want you to be aware of we are going to map out extreme levels just because anything can sort of happen here with earnings coming up but i wanted you to be aware and knowledgeable of that even if you take a trade in the correct direction uh, with the correct earnings play, you could still end up losing money. So we're not trading earnings, we're just trading the volatility leading up to them. So first up on the chopping block is going to be Apple. And what I want you to take note of here is that we have a new resistance coming up at 389.18. If we go higher than that, there could be a bounce in the road here. But ultimately, the next point above is going to be up at the all-time high, right around $400. So 
that is targets to the upside. If we go higher based on any sort of earnings pump beforehand, we're looking at whole and half dollars as well as any intraday levels that do form. To the downside, though, we have developed a new key support at our previous all-time high level here at 385.50. If we go lower, looking at a retest of our double bottom as we covered in last week's video there at 378.81. Lower than that, we have a support zone in here between 372.38 and 370. And then lower than that, this level here at 365.24. And again, because earnings are coming up, we're going to map out a ton of levels. So just bear with me. Lower than that one, we have our 353.41. And the last one we'll go to is here at 344.93 based on the 50 SMA starting to coincide and forming a super support should any sort of terrible major collapse here happen on earnings. Again, I do want you to be prepared with all these levels. So that's why we're covering them. Uh, that is the last one we'll go over. But you can see here uh, the other two for your own reference. So again, Netflix is a prime example of why we're not going to play earnings regardless of how confident you are in the company and the direction that we're going to go. Simply because here on Netflix, of course, everyone was thinking it wanted to go higher with earnings when in reality, we essentially saw a huge move to the downside. It recovered quite nicely during the pre-market, uh, sort of the final hours leading up before the official market opened there on Friday. Uh, but again, you, you just don't want to you don't want to gamble. If you do gamble, then you know only put in what you're willing to lose. But for here on Netflix, what we're watching for now that earnings are over, we can sort of constrain ourselves a little bit. We're going to look at key support here, the low of Friday, uh, 485.32. If it fails, coming back down into this support zone, previous breakout area here at 474 quarter and then 469.14. It's sort of a zone, if you will. Lower than that, we have our 50 SMA coinciding and starting to creep up at our uh, 455.60 level. And then lastly, lower than that, 445.16. To the upside, though, if we get a breakout and continuation higher, uh, you know, we sort of have a question mark candle, as I like to call it, forming here. If we can break above our 504.10 support or resistance, rather, now that we're below it, we're looking at a move up to 528.42 and higher than that, potentially at 544.65. So Tesla does have earnings coming up on the 22nd, which is going to be Wednesday of this week. And you can tell based on what we're looking at here, it's sort of coiling up in anticipation of that move. I think we're seeing some sort of a triangle pattern forming, something that looks like that. So we're ultimately just watching for a breakdown below our support trend line or breakout higher than our resistance trend line. So keep that in mind. If we go higher, we have first resistance here at 1548.91. Anything above that, we have an intraday level that formed uh, over here around 1652.66 and of course the all-time high way up there at 1794.99 you know no market structure in this area whatsoever so if we get above that level look for a pretty quick swing up to the all-time high potentially and then blue sky levels over that and again because we are dealing with earnings we're going to cover almost all the levels we have below in case any crazy situation happens so if the support trend line breaks of the triangle first coming back to retest our breakout level in here 14 18 69 lower than that we have 13 64 61 and then remembering that we have lots and lots of poor structure below us so there's two major gaps one happening here and one happening here Gap 1 fills from 1266 to 1228. Gap 2, again, remembering that there's only one day of price action in between, fills between 1185 to 1134. Lower than that, we have, uh, I wouldn't really consider this one too strong of a support there between 1085 and 1071, but this one most definitely here at uh, 1019.55 should act as strong support given all the touches and price history we have around it. And again, I'm only covering this because we do have earnings coming up. Anything can sort of happen. And the 50 SMA is at that level as well. So keep that in mind. I'm not necessarily saying Tesla has to make a move all the way down here, but again, be prepared for anything. So Baba's earnings are quite far away and they're not really going to impact what we trade this upcoming week. But what's interesting or not really interesting, what's kind of nasty about this chart is that it's extremely choppy and it doesn't really have a clear direction to be showing us at the moment. So this gap has filled. We'll get rid of these uh, areas on the chart and then we'll redraw them in as support because this one certainly is acting as a bit of a support price level. But other than that, there's really not a whole lot to go on here, right? We have a hammer that happened at support. We tried to go higher, but we couldn't. Inverted hammer, double bottom at our previous support, expecting a move lower. And we actually went higher. We gapped up and sort of held that next day. So very interesting, not a very clear cutout plan here on BABA. 
the only thing I'd recommend is to watch for a move lower than uh, 141 to potentially come back down and test the top of our gap. Remembering this gap exists in the chart here at 232.78. If that starts to get acceptance and fills into it, gap closes at 225.08. That's quite far away for a week's worth of price action. Uh, and to the upside, again, with this chop that's going on here, there's really no clear targets to the upside other than the fact if we can clear this high here, which is sort of coinciding with that low, which uh, let's just grab a price level on it. 251.84, if we can go higher than that, targets above are quite clear at 257 and then 261, and uh, ultimately the all-time high up there at 268. So very, very choppy. I would really, on this one, wait for more market information to develop before taking a trade on it. Facebook having earnings coming up here on the 29th, which is not this upcoming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. So be prepared for anything. Uh, we are going to cover all of our levels. We're looking at what looks to be a daily bull flag starting to form, something like that. So if we can get back up to our 247.16 sort of top of the flag resistance and then break out higher, uh, we're looking at a target first of 250.15, anything higher than that, blue sky levels, whole and half dollars, as well as any intraday levels that do form. But let's say we break down out of our flag. We don't get that continuation higher. If 238 breaks, we're looking at a move to come back down to 231.73, in which case the 50 SMA should start to coincide with that level, forming a super support, expecting a first touch bounce at that. But if it breaks and we go lower, first level below is going to be at 222.18. Lower than that, we have our next level at 207.13 from where the panic from the Facebook ad withdrawal panic sort of thing happened there. 207, anything lower, our 201.60 with the uh, 200 SMA coinciding is going to be our last ditch support there. So watch for all those levels, again, covering everything with earnings coming up, binary play, anything could happen. Coming into NVIDIA, looks like we have some strong resistance coming up here at 409.15 based on the fact we had support, close, resistance, resistance there on Friday. If we can clear it to the upside, we're looking at a quick move up to 416.25, in which case we have new resistance there. Clearing that one, targets up at 426.21, and then of course the all-time high in blue sky territories after that. Based on what we're looking at here, I think it very much could be in store for a play to the upside based on the fact that we have a pullback and a nice strong uptrend. Now we are starting to see buyers return, in which case, again, I think the upside targets could be in store. To the downside, though, let's say this sort of area of the chart fails. There's a bit of a support based on the lows of our hammers that have formed in this area, if I could get the right tool. There we go. So this area does look to be like a little bit of a support. And I know I'm sort of splitting hairs here and there's a lot of levels around, but 402.10, if that one fails, looking for a move to come back down to 389.50. Lower than that, the previous breakout level should act as strong support at 380. And then the 50 SMA, keeping in mind that that will continue to creep upwards, will act as support in between our next major levels down to 363.50. 50. That's as low as we'll go. Earnings are a little bit further out on this one, so don't necessarily have to worry about that for now. Microsoft looks like we have a bit of a triple bottom forming here at a previous all-time high and sort of breakout level, if you will. So 202.16 looks like it wants to be strong support, especially with the hammer forming there on Friday. It'd be ideal if that body was a little smaller, but if we see a move to the upside based on that, we are looking at 208.02 as next resistance. Over that, we have 211.13, and ultimately the all-time high sort of area up here between 214.50 and 216.38. After that, blue sky levels, of course. If this area fails, though, and we see this act as a flush point, we go below 202.16, looking at a move to come back down into our 196.50 area. 200 might provide a psychological support, and depending on what time of the week this all happens, uh, if it happens, again, remembering that our support trend line could act before we get into the uh, 196 level. If we go lower, though, we have 193.89, which the 250 uh, SMA, rather, is starting to coincide with. And lastly, lower than that, because we do have earnings coming up, we have 186.72 and 180 uh, on the dot down here to act as support should we see any sort of major collapse on uh, bad news or something of the sort. Again, wanting you to be prepared for any sort of movement. And last but not least, we have Amazon, the almighty, with earnings coming up here on, I think, the 30th. Let's check that real quick. Yes, the 30th, which is going to be not this upcoming Thursday, but the Thursday after that. Finally, coming back down to reality, giving us a nice sort of pullback here, coming into our support, which we mapped out in last week's video at 29.55.56. So if we get a bounce off of this level, if this turns into a nice little bull flag, you know, instead of a pennant, if this one looks more like a flag, sort of like this. If we get the breakout higher, we first have to battle up through this resistance here, 30.68.91, and then we can contend with 32.15.93 and the all-time high, of course, up 
up at 33.44.29. To the downside, though, if this breaks, again, remembering with earnings, anything can sort of happen here. If this uh, support level breaks, looking for a move to come back down to here. Wrong tool, of course, but it works. Down to 27.81. Lower than that, 50 SMA will provide a first touch sort of support bounce, but uh, not a whole lot there. Next level below is at 26.30.61. Lower than that, we'll go to 25.15, 24.44, and 23.13 as, you know, the ultimate level. I'm not saying, again, with all of these earnings plays, I'm not saying that we want to see a move all the way down here. All I'm saying is that I want you to be prepared if there is any sort of adverse reaction to earnings and we do start to collapse here, you know, you have levels to trade off of. That's going to wrap up this week's episode of the Weekly Watchlist. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, feel free to let me know down below in the comments section or simply leave the video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the push and pull of the tug of war between the markets. And with that, I wish you a green trading week.